The U.S. is one of the top nations with rivers that are continuously struggling and deteriorating dams are a major factor in floods changing from their original shape. There is also erosion, less vegetation on riverbanks, and a decline in both water and near-water biodiversity. To make matters worse, fires can make things even worse. Worsening the situation by destroying any remaining life near rivers, but in Washington state, scientists discovered a way to revive rivers even after wildfires. They simply released some beavers there, and soon after, the burned area began to exhibit signs that had not been observed in years. Does the idea of beavers rescuing Washington sound audacious and even a? Eh? The Mississippi River, with its vast network of tributaries, is the first river that comes to mind when discussing the deterioration of U.S. waterways. It is, of course, the nation's main artery and is connected in some way to 40% of all land in the continental U.S. Let's see how it all works. The dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, which is present for the majority of the summer off the coast of Louisiana and is essentially a buildup of nitrates and phosphorus that flow into the Mississippi from the farming industry and everything else, will give you an idea of how much human activity affects the river. That generates waste, but that's not all. Active human activity in the Mississippi River Basin also results in the loss of wetlands and true biodiversity hotspots. Floodplain forests serve as safe havens and food sources for hundreds of different species of fish, birds, insects, and other animals. After all, it's just a forest. However, this is also, let's say, a complex type of forest that is susceptible to flooding by the Mississippi or one of its tributaries. As a result, you may find even more species in these types of forests, ranging from those that are not endangered to those that people actively work to protect, such as the floodplain forests in the upper Mississippi region, are home to 180 species of birds during migration and nesting. That's a pretty good number, and we're only talking about feathered creatures here. If you include all species, the number jumps into the thousands. However, since the 1800s, people have been actively developing both the upper and lower Mississippi regions, so the upper part has lost. Here is a typical scene you might encounter today. Trees that have become dead wood due to changing conditions. These photos are from Reno Bottoms, a wildlife refuge near the Minnesota-Iowa border in the lower Mississippi, where a variety of species live. Nearly half of this floodplain forest cover from back then to the present. According to a 2020 study, the land is forested. This sounds good overall, but only if you exclude the fact that the valley was once entirely covered in forest, What's amazing and somewhat tragic is that human activity has caused the floodplain forest to decline, which has resulted in the Mississippi, and almost every year some portion of the river is struck by its tributaries, causing significant harm to both the environment and people. Now, we're moving on to Washington State, which is probably not the type of place you think of when you think about river degradation or the loss of biodiversity as a result of human activity. The waterways appear immaculate, but that is only how they appear. In reality, human activity has impacted the ecosystems of the state's waterways as well. According to the Center for American Progress, or CHAP, over 46% of all Washington rivers have changed, and if you divide the rivers by size, 68% of all large. According to estimates made prior to the active development of the region by European settlers, 42% of smaller streams and rivers have been altered and 10% of rivers in Washington do not flow freely due to obstacles like 751 large dams. Additionally, 44% of rivers pass through land that has been significantly altered or developed by human activity. 40-50% to of Washington's landscape was made up of waterways such as floodplain forests and wetlands. Then came the period of excessive livestock grazing along rivers and streams, agricultural development, intense resource extraction, and deforestation, all of which contributed to the degradation of streams and a decrease in their complexity. And loss of habitat quality and abundance along waterways, Currently, only 2% of the area surrounding the river is made up of floodplain forests and wetlands. When things get bad, something happens to make them worse. Fires in 2015, a fire started on the Twist River, a tributary of the Metho, and spread over 11,100 acres, judging by. According to reports from the scene, nature suffered greatly. A fire destroys everything, including the smallest trace of life. As a result, the Twist River and its environs lost a significant amount of their biodiversity which is noteworthy given how depressing things were already. You could say that the land surrounding the river went through. Surprisingly, those who gnaw on trees literally reduce the number of beavers, which is what actually helped restore a completely destroyed land and can help restore water routes to their original state even after double degradation from human activity and fire. It's important to note right away that beavers were. There used to be hundreds or thousands of these animals on the twist of the metho and other rivers, but after European settlers arrived, they hunted every toothy engineer they could find in an attempt to make money, which led to the near extinction of beavers in Washington. 
In 2007, the Methyl Beaver Project was started with the goal of reviving the beaver population on the Methyl River, which was completely destroyed by the 2015 fire. Three pairs of beavers were released into the streams of Black Canyon, which the Methyl River flows through. After a while, the researchers returned and discovered that every beaver had survived the winter and even constructed one or two dams. Later, it was found that each site under observation had seven or more dams. You could say that the land restoration projects are going really well. Beavers are building their dams to make ponds where they can hide from predators, and this is the ideal environment for land restoration. Works by blocking the river, a pond is formed in front of it. You could say that the dam causes the water to overflow, which means that floodplain forests and wetlands receive the water that was previously lost due to human activity. Beavers are like a natural booster shot for the post-fire conditions. Recover because these animals' creation of wetlands and floodplain forests attracts a wide variety of species. Eventually, the researchers reached the recently burned area and observed dams with a number of large, deep ponds behind them, surrounded by marsh and shoreline plants including aspen shoots in addition, it was clear that the restored landscape was about to draw deer, elk, witty, and many other animals because they love visiting wetlands. Unfortunately for the beavers, they are slow, plump animals that make a delicious meal for coyotes, pumas, and bears. This also boosts biodiversity, though not in the most significant way. It also turned out that only a small number of beavers can restore an area after it has been completely destroyed by fire. Overall, scientists were obviously correct when they referred to beavers as a keystone species because of the many benefits they provide, which go beyond land restoration. Do you agree with the notion that beavers could potentially protect a region from fires and even droughts, which the US and the rest of the world are currently very concerned about? This idea was put forth in 2008 as part of a project that was a collaboration between the US Forest Service, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the Salmon Recovery Funding around the in the upper tributaries of the Eastern Cascades, over 300 beavers have been released. According to project participants, one beaver dam can create a pond that can hold a million gallons of water. Can you imagine how many ponds 300 beavers could create? Well, there's no need to imagine. The project area is carefully examined by its 176 ponds were created by the release of beavers. And while some are larger than others, biologists surveyed 62 beaver aid ponds as part of the project and determined that they contain almost 5 million gallons of water. To put that into perspective, these ponds would be sufficient to supply in. It may not seem impressive that the average household in Twist would have access to drinking water for five years, but according to the same biologist, the project's beaver-built dams catch 65 million gallons of water annually, which is enough to supply a typical Twist household for 24 years. Beaver Pond Storage is another study. In the Columbia River Basin, water storage was assessed in 12 beaver complexes or around 29 ponds. It was discovered that each of these ponds also stores water underground and in significant quantities. 6 million gallons like ordinary man-made dams. How could this all help combat the droughts that people were so concerned about? During hot summers, the natural water storage system made by beavers gradually releases cold, clean water downstream. In contrast, water bodies that beavers haven't restored frequently dry up and don't provide any water at all. Beaver-made ponds store water that people can use for drinking when river flow drops. As evident as it may seem, water doesn't typically catch fire, so a pond serves as a sort of fire shield. The Methyl Beaver Project confirmed that the fire couldn't pass through a beaver dam because it affected areas where beavers had previously planted. This is how beavers can help fight fires like the one on the Twist River in 2015. The beaver-built reservoir also serves as a water source for firefighters. In fact, the researchers from the Methyl Beaver Project are proud to report that after visiting the project area after the fire in 2015, they discovered numerous ponds with only one side scorched, while the other side's plants were unaffected. Said that one of the ponds was used especially for this purpose. Beaver ponds also serve as water buffers to prevent floods and trap sediment reducing the impact of mud flows. Beavers seem to deserve more recognition because they are multipurpose saviors that can restore the waterway to its original much healthier state. And just when you think you've heard about all the advantages of beavers, here comes salmon. Yes, beavers also help with this. Salmon is a fish with a complex life story. It is born in fresh water, grows in streams, and then travels downstream to linger in river mouths until it reaches a size where it can survive in the ocean. With an abundance of food in the ocean, salmon begin their intricate journey back to the freshwater ponds in the upper reaches of the rivers, where they spawn before dying. Washington State is a salmon paradise. With tons of small streams, access to the ocean, and other amenities, 
but the state's population increased by 63 percent between 1990 and 2020 and is predicted to reach 9 million by 2040, which would be equivalent to adding another Seattle to the state. As the population continues to increase, more land and water will be required for living, working, and recreation, which is already causing salmon habitats to disappear and more damage is anticipated. Puig Sound is one example. A third of its enormous shoreline, which is more than 2,500 meters long, lost its salmon habitat over time. This is why dams and other structures were constructed to protect homes and other infrastructure. All of this protection alters the habitat of salmon and forage fish because the reinforcement prevents waves from eroding the bluffs creating. As we've already mentioned, floodplains and beaches where salmon eat insects and other fish are also severely impacted by human activity. For instance, according to some reports, between 50 and 90 percent of the land along Washington's waterways has been lost or drastically altered by humans. These are areas with lush vegetation that provide shade and keep the water cool while filtering out pollutants. Basically, floodplains are a safe haven and a food source for young salmon, so changing or eliminating them entirely becomes a real challenge for this priceless fish. Of course, fixing all that requires a full-on complex approach, which is exactly what beavers can assist with the state's current efforts to restore and protect salmon habitats. In Washington state, the Tully Beaver Project has released more than 200 beavers since 2014. The project's primary objective was to increase the declining salmon population. The beavers constructed dozens of ponds proved to be ideal places for young salmon to live and grow because the water is just the right temperature for them. In addition, ponds provide a lot of shade giving plants and a lot of insects that can be eaten. In other words, a pond is a perfect temporary home for a fish that has had a difficult journey. However, this project did not track how many fish were present. Up after the beavers arrive, the team says they just don't have the resources to do that, so biologists are measuring easier to collect data, such as water temperature and the size and number of new ponds. For the participants, a better habitat is the most important indicator, because better habitat means more salmon. If that doesn't quite persuade someone to visit, biologists have seen sites completely change into enormous beaver complexes with 13 dams and ponds all over the place. Hundreds of baby salmon are now living in those ponds, by the way, all of these beaver reintroduction projects not only help to reverse river degradation but also, they also save the beavers themselves because they have two options, either they are killed or they live peacefully as part of a project. The problem is that beavers are still not considered useful animals in most places. They gnaw on trees and make their own irrigation systems. Farmers, let's just, aren't happy about that kind of behavior, so the chief engineers of the natural world frequently just end up dead. Thanks to initiatives like Mathol Beaver, things are different now and any Washingtonian could call the organization, wait for the team to arrive, and then watch as the troublemakers are carted instead of picking up a gun. Off somewhere in the woods, all of the beavers who are currently actively repairing damaged rivers are actually the same troublemakers who were arrested. For example, one of this group of untamed builders was arrested for damaging apple trees and another red-haired woman was caught tearing down poplars and reforming them as part of naturally certain projects are unachievable, but beavers will always enjoy chewing on them. Trees but controlling that impulse and the appropriate practical path, which is the ideal result for the beavers as well. Both for themselves 